opportunity. There's always deals in good times or bad times. There's always deals. And if you're waiting to start a business, you need to start your business right now. Today, you need to start your business. You need to get up on it. You need to make it happen. What we're going to talk about in this video is how to start businesses with no money. But there's a disclaimer to that. At some point, you will have to put money in the business just to let you know. If you didn't know who I am, that's right, who I am. What we do is talk about business, money, a little social, economic politics, and anything you need to know to make some money to enhance your income. Best way to enhance your income is to start a business. It's the fastest way to get wealthy, bar none. Be sure to subscribe and more important. All right, so what we're going to talk about is deals. And I want to use myself to illustrate how in so-called good times, and they were good times, the late 90s, um, I had a situation where I was homeless. I was in a boarding house. And that happened during one of the first stage of the internet revolution. Dot coms were exploding. People were get, having ridiculous amount of money thrown at them. Yet I was living in a boarding house. Yet I had no money. I was in that situation for about two and a half years. But all around me, people were making money. So what, what does that illustrate? It illustrates that I did not have marketable skill sets. It was good times. I just didn't have the ability to take advantage of those good times. Now, fast forward to 2009. We know what happened 2007 to 2008, 2009, probably 2010 and 11. The world's economy crashed. A lot of people weren't making money. People were losing homes. People were losing jobs. People were spending down their 401ks. Yet I, from 2009 to 2011, made $1.6 million. I said 1.5, but it was 1.6 when you count everything. Times were bad for most people, yet how did I go from living in a boarding house when times were good and not making any money to making money when times were bad for most people? We're going to get into that in this video. Be sure to watch from the beginning to the end so you don't miss nothing. Matter of fact, you need to watch this video maybe two to 10 times so you get it all. Number one, marketable skill sets are everything. Forget a college degree, forget about position, forget about your experience. If the market is saying, if you're going out to the market like, I, I have my PhD, I have my bachelor's, I have my master's, <laughs> and the market's going, okay, what, what can you do for us? You don't have marketable skill sets. I know you worked hard on your degrees. I know that you made the dean's list. You graduated cum laude. I understand your plight. But see, this is what's happening. The world is moving at the speed of light. So those marketable skill sets that you paid all that money for and went to school for in the 70s, the 80s, and the 90s, well, guess what? Today, no one cares. Don't care how hard you work because you cannot go into a company and facilitate change and make an impact to that bottom line. So they're just like, next. So that's what's happening. Marketable skill sets are everything. And you can teach yourself marketable skill sets. This is how you can start a business with no money. Now, you're going to have to work like a ninja. You're going to have to work so hard. You're going to have to sacrifice so hard. And you're going to have to start drinking from the fountain of delayed gratification. You're not going to be able to spend the money that you make from your business for a while. That's the problem with starting a business with no money. Once again, I have a few businesses going on. And we'll talk about Mac Daddy Media, which was started January, well, Cameron Strode Media is the holding company. Mac Daddy Media is the operating company. This was started in 2017. A lot of the money has gone through that company. I'm not taking out a penny. A lot of the money, I haven't taken out a penny. I've been living off my hustle money. And this is what you're going to have to do. 
If you're going to start a business with no money, which is very easy to do, you're going to have to have another source of income above and beyond that business. That's the little wrinkle that many people are missing because it's going to take you, and I want you to hear me, two to 10 years, once again, two to 10 years before that business gets big enough, it starts filling itself, its shoulders come in, it starts becoming that business that you want it to be so it can pay you. The money, the dollar bills that go in that business are bullets in your economic gun. If you are taking some of your bullets to shoot off in your business and you're taking some of your bullets to live on, you are hurting yourself in this economic war. So you got to think of bilateral businesses. You need your business that you're building, which you, you can't touch none of the money, mm -mm. and a side hustle that you live on that pays your mortgage, that pays your car payment and all this other stuff. And there's a ton of side hustles where you can make three to 10K a month. But see, this, this is the problem. Many of you, and I'm going to be gentle, are not used to working very hard with delayed gratification. I am 51 years old. I came from that generation. I'm going to tell you this story, Miss Jones. Miss Sally Mae Jones I used to cut her yard. You know, when I was a kid, you know, someone had posted this, uh, the, gun, the GoFundMe of the 1970s and 80s was a kid behind the lawnmower. That was the GoFundMe. I cut the grass, right? Thought I did a good job. Miss Jones, who was quite elderly at the time, had a walker or a cane sometimes. She came out and she said, uh, Cameron, you see that blade of grass there? You see that blade of grass there? You see that? I'm not going to pay you till you fix those defects. So crank up the lawnmower, went, and I learned instead of just trying to cut you know, even I had to have a little overlap so I can get all of those defects. I had to work twice as hard to get my money. Thank you, Miss Jones, because you taught me how to work hard. Everybody was like that in my neighborhood. I worked for this one company. Uh, they had a trucking company and I went to their house and I was cutting down weeds. Once again, she fed me lunch, some ham sandwiches and some pickles. And then she went ahead and she's like, look, this is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. So either you need to fix this or I'm going to dock you. So I'm with the machete. See, that's the kind of grooming that I got as a young man. And many of you are not getting that. No fault of your own. It's your parents' fault. They didn't raise you to be productive. They didn't raise you to be creative. They didn't raise you to be industrious because everyone got hooked on that. Well, Little Susie, little Jamal, you going to college and you're going to get one of those nice, clean jobs, right? Well, that ain't really working out so well now because a lot of those nice, clean jobs are being automated. So little Susie, little Jamal is in the basement of the parent's house at 28, 30, 40, you know, in some cases, 40 years old. They boomerang kids. They leave and they come back. They leave and they come back because they never understood how the world works. So you can start a business with no money, but you're going to have to do something called sweat equity and delayed gratification. That's going to be the key, because if you think you're going to start this business and you're going to have your Lambo like so many of these FBA course sellers. <laughs> hey. I started FBA six months ago. Now I have my Lambo. And hey, here's Big Booty Betty. They have this imagery. You see all of this stuff. You see it, and it's so seductive. You, who wouldn't want that? You right now, broke. You don't have enough money. And here comes this guy for only $798. I can change your life. That's exciting. If I didn't know any better, if I wasn't as indoctrinated into the reality of how hard it is to make a lot of money, I would be like, shoot, I where I buy this. I'd be trying to get that so quick. My fingers would be on fire. Even if you get a course, you're still going to have to work. You're still going to have to deploy delayed gratification. You're still going to have to put in sweat equity and you're still going to have to 
have the principles of wealth and the principles of wealth is not to lose money. That's the first principle of wealth. That's why the rich folk, the not the one percent, but the zero point something percent are very much on a tax game. Very much so. The Googles, the Apples, the Dutch sandwich where they're paying like seven percent of their income in taxes. You can't play that game. You don't have enough money. But you can play the hustler, entrepreneur, start of the business on the side game, which will realize you a lot of money from your taxes. So you got to start playing the game. You got to start slow. You got to realize that you're a little baby hustler. You know, you're still vulnerable. Now, you could grow up to be a big boy hustler, but it's going to take some time. So repeat after me. I am not going to have my Lambo this time next year. Just repeat. Just go ahead. I am not going to have my Lambo. I'm not going to have my mansion. It ain't going to happen. But if I work hard enough in five to 10 years, I will have that stuff And my. Uh, I don't know if y'all could hear it. My my landscape of services here, but. Part of getting money and realizing that there's always opportunity, because as I told you in the beginning of this stream. When times were good, I was poor. And when times were bad, I was rich. It's all about these marketable skill sets. It's always about creating businesses that serve a lot of people. See, a lot of people want to do this YouTube thing, make some videos, get a lot of money, quit their job. Silly rabbits. It don't work like that. It never did. And it really don't work like that today unless you've got some seriously uh, hustler undergrad tutelage bringing you up. Once again, you can start a business with no money, but the missing ingredient is you need a side hustle or a spouse, someone to hold down them home bills while you take every dollar that that business has and reinvest it into the business to make it grow faster. And that's the trick. That's the little nuance. No one's going to tell you that's that's the hard part. That's the little trip up. That's the gotcha because so many people want to be better. I understand. I understand you want to be better. I understand you want more money. I understand you want to do better for your family. I want to understand you want to put your kids through private college, private school. I understand, but you don't seem to understand how the real world works because see that belief that you can scale up your business in a matter of weeks or months, that's going to keep you on the sidelines. You can be like this. Well, I could just keep messing around, keep playing around. I don't have to start that business because you know, do the hustler porn uh, due to the internet that hmm, I can start my business at 50, scale it up in a few weeks, scale up a few months, and then, you know, get my Lambo in 18, 19 months. Now, there are people who do these things. There are people who go into a new market or an established market and they crush it. They absolutely crush it. And you know what we call these people? Unicorns. They're exceptional. Many people are parading exceptional people as if they're normal, as if this is typical for someone to be 18 years old. And by the time they're 20, be making a million dollars a year is highly atypical. It ain't the norm. It's just not. But that's how it's being sold to you. That's what's getting you all gassed up because I'm here to tell you. If you work hard enough, if you live long enough, if you serve enough people, you'll be rich. But. You, you got to do that work. You got to put in that time. You got to put in that effort. And a lot of people ain't trying to put in that time or effort. So first step that you do, you find a business that you like. Do not, once again, you got a business model, you got to hustle. Your hustle, you don't have to like your hustle. Your hustle is temporary. Your hustle should last two to three years. You can do Amazon FBA as a hustle. You can do eBay as a hustle. That shouldn't be your main ingredient. That shouldn't be your entree. Then this business that you want to start, I don't care what it is. You start it. You start a business that you, you, you like. You like the people. You like the products. You really like it. Because see, this is the thing. Because it's going to take so long for you to get up on your business that if you don't like it, you're going to grow to hate this. So why are you going to create a job 
aka business that you hate. How much sense does that make when you have a choice? How much sense does that make? Let me know in the comments. How much sense does that make? So one of the things you have to do is to produce value. Now, value could be anything. There are two businesses in my neighborhood. There is a donut shop and there is all about the bunt cakes. They sell cakes. You need cakes? Nope. Are cakes actually good for you? Nope. But they have a very good business model and they were well capitalized. And that store has been in business for seven years, I believe. And the donut shop came in about two years ago and they closed at four because, see, they don't make their money from people coming in. They make their money from deliveries and pickups. You know, because they're in the they're surrounded by all these office buildings. So people come in, pick up a dozen, two dozen donuts and put them on the coffee table at business. That's that's their business model. See, they're not just out here selling donuts. They're selling convenience. They're selling service. Uh, the bunt cake thing, the cakes are tasty. They really are. Who are they selling to? Corporate. Not selling to you and I. I mean, sometimes we go in there, but that's typically most of their business. It's their corporate clients. But why? Because they moved in this neighborhood and uh, the King and Queen building, which is literally down the street. That's who their client base is. So when you see these businesses and you see they're doing well, you got to really peek behind the curtain to know what their business model is. You, that's why I find it so interesting when people try to copy other people's businesses without knowing the secret ingredients. It's funny. It is hilarious. But that's the key. Because it's going to take you some time. Now, here's the good news. Let's say you have your business that you love, that you like, and you enjoy working on it. And you work on it a little bit at a time. You know, take those bullets that the business makes. And it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Then your hustle can be your job. Your hustle could be some stuff you don't like. Because I assume, like, let's take eBay. Let's say eBay. Amazon and Craigslist. You could probably make between all three of them 100K a year without working overtime. If you have a plan, if you know how to do resale, you could work a 20 to 30 hour a week and make 100K a month doing resale, 100K a year. But here's the problem. Whatever people start making money on, they become addicted to making money that way. I'm guilty of it. Like, you can't get me off YouTube. Matter of fact, I started some more channels. Because once you become accustomed to making a certain way, money a certain way, then uh, it, it becomes very distasteful to leave that way of making money. So this is why you have to have two businesses, a business and a hustle at the same time. Because if you just do this one eye, this thing, Let's say your business is finally getting to the point to throw off money and your hustle disappears. You still standing on all on your two legs because you had, you you were prepared. But let's say your 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 hustle is Amazon and then Amazon moves to cheese. You all kinds of messed up. I've seen it. I used to be in some Amazon groups and I got out of that because I got tired of complaining. Now, once again, I said, and I put up videos, no eBay, no Amazon, and predicted to the letter what was going to happen. People like, Glenda Cameron's a hater. Glenda Cameron, you know why he, he's saying all that stuff? Because he couldn't make it on eBay. He couldn't make it on Amazon. I was a platinum seller before y'all even knew what platinum was. But once again, people forget. People don't want to pay homage to the forefather because once again, I was one of the founding fathers of the reseller community on YouTube. Anyone say that they'll be shot down because of all these new young guns, all these people with their new channels and they're growing really fast. But see, do this, do me this favor. Check out all of their views, overall views compared to subscribers. It's very interesting. And check out their money. It ain't the same. But anywho, you can do it. I have confidence. I have faith in you, but you got to 
embrace these terms of delayed gratification. You got to embrace these times that you're going to have to work two hustles. And one, you can't touch the money. Nope. All right. So with that, let's get in the chat room. There seems to be a lot of people going on. Okay. It's not too bad. It's Friday. What's up, Johnny Walton? You in Florida, Western <laughs> Chill Zone. I wore this shirt because this is the shirt that I wore in the first. Uh, I didn't title it How to Start a Business with No Money because that, that topic is just swamped. So I had to change up the title. That's a little YouTube game for you. What's up, George Senior, Cashmatic, Christian Amerson, Sir Nicholas, Yolanda, Excalibur, Richard. Oh, it is a burner. Michael, <laughs> you know, I got this out of a storage unit about, wow, 15, 16 years ago. What's up, Agent J. Pool, Ganja? Uh, yes, the text notification. Once again, YouTube does not send out notifications, even if you ring the bell. It doesn't matter. If you want to be insured to get the videos, go below and get on the text notification list. What's up, Cool Breeze? Roll Tide. Luxurious Hustle. I like that name. See, one of the things, and let's just peep this real quick. What you name your avatar is part of what's in your subconscious mind. So you want to have a baller avatar name. And also, this is something else too with uh, Luxurious Hustle. He actually has his face as the avatar. I'm just telling you, you know, if you feel good about yourself, you have a good mindset. These are the things you're going to do. Because whenever somebody comes at me like, yeah, man, I made money. I made more money than you. But they got a name like Shaggy876, and they got a picture of a dog as their avatar. They ain't hitting on nothing. They ain't hitting on nothing. That's right, Agent J. Pool. The throttle effect is real on the pay to play. <laughs> What's up, Chris Love? Superstar Customs, good day. Webinars are getting better and better. Thanks. Yeah, because uh, last webinar happened last night, and it's in Hustle Undergrad, and I did a diagram. You know what's funny? I was trying to put together a diagram, you know, diagrams using Canva, and it was just like, it wasn't working. So I just drew it on this iPad, which is all kinds of mess on the, I just drew it on this, and people seem to love that. Uh, got the audio down because uh, what I'm going to do is redo those earlier webinars because the audio actually just is garbage. So I appreciate that, Superstar Gusums. What's up, Lucid Dreamer? Jamal, Jim Cal. Good morning, Irvin. <laughs> you know about it's about those Wheaties, man. What's up, Latasha? The Beauty, JCH. Lamode. Oh, man, you are up early, JCH. What's up, Lamode? Good morning, SB. 285, top of the morning. Cool breeze. Just think most banks, most banks have a five to seven year capitalization phase. Yeah, a lot of people, like I'm having this conversation with this fool. I want everybody to, if you have on any type of athletic shoe, casual wear shoe, go below, pull up the tongue, you know, you know, the tongue and see where this shoe is made. Because uh, someone's like, you know, you represent Nike in these sweatshops. Fool, most of these shoes are made in the same places. So if you're going to burn your Nikes, you might as well burn your Gucci. Might as well burn your Converts. Might as well. And he clapped back. Because, see, once again, he's a Trump person. And you know these people have no sense. So I'm just going to let it be. I didn't even read this comment because I know it's stupid and insipid. But once again, you have people out here who are masquerading as an intelligent adults, but every day they display how stupid they are because they don't want to learn. They don't want to be so, you know, I, I had someone on the comment section who was wrong. And instead of like saying like a man, my bad. No, 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 no. He dug in deeper. <sighs> well, how dare you say those things to me? How dare you? And, oh, he can't speak intelligently. I've been speaking intelligently, articulately for 10 years. But once again, haters, any little, they just need a corner to hate. And they go in their corner and hate and like, oh, I got a cookie. I got a cookie. Test two babies. What's up, Michelle? Michelle. 
Go, Yolanda. Yep, I shared the GoFundMe post. That that was hilarious. What's up, Amar? Health and wealth. Good morning. I have to say, after years of working on myself, I am kicking on delayed gratification, especially with losing weight. You know, that's a that's a very good point there because. Little story, and I'll get back on topic. I have finally, and it's taken me two years, I have finally got my diet correct. And the diet isn't just something that I'm going to do for six weeks or seven weeks to lose weight. No, the diet is a consistent thing. And it's gotten to the point where I can actually lose weight because now I'm working out just lower body and I got to work out to do the day. And I'm not even working that upper body because I got goals, but that is so hard. And also I've lost 50 pounds and I've kept it off because I got to get that diet thing together, which all plays into delayed gratification. You know, next summer I could be very close to the six pack world again, but it's taken like two and a half years. And that's something that a lot of people don't want to do. They want to lose it quick, mess up their metabolism and then wonder why it's so hard to lose weight. So congratulations, health, wealth, in real talk. What's up, Chris Isaac? Lucid Dreamer. Lucid Dreamer. Yeah, delayed gratification is where it's at, man. Jim Cal, that's exactly right. Mofo, I can change your life too for a fee. Great topic this morning, Glenn. <laughs> Uh, cool breeze. We'll be talking about that in the Q and a, uh, everybody that's in hustler undergrad, there'll be a Q and a based on the information that was yesterday tonight after seven. Lucid, I'm not going to add my Lambo. No, you're not. If you're exceptional, you might, you might. Okay, cool. So I got this mic versus the lapel mic. Good deal, Lucid Dreamer. What's up, Crystal Davis? Quentin Jackson. I'm 23, and my dad and mentor taught me to work hard and grind. I've done construction, demolition, accounting, direct sales, public speaking, various admin, admin tasks, janitor, and I'm a musician producer. Man, you got a whole arrow quiver full of skill sets because if you're young, this is what you need to do. You need to do a lot of different jobs, Especially, you need to work like a maniac on finding out what makes you really happy between 16 and 25, which is a lot of times people are partying. Kubris, I really I don't have a business I'm really interested in. I'm thinking of more investing, not in stocks and more everything else. Uh, if you can become really good in investing, you create a business. I'm just here to tell you. Most people actually don't do that well in investing. Mo Grizzly produced value all day long. Lucid Dreamer Romer wasn't built overnight. That's my bakery. Same hustle. Free T3. All right. All right. All right. It just jumped. <laughs> okay. Good Lord, it jumped. To a fire property, you business agnostic. Whatever way makes money. Money Jones, like that name. Keep your mouth coming. Jamal, you two stay moving that cheese like you call a digital share crop. And yeah, because I'm not even asking for subscribers. I'm going to even tell you what's going to happen. Once I get about two or three thousand people on the uh, notification list the channel will explode because that's a direct influx of traffic because essentially youtube is saying we're gonna give you a little traffic but you're gonna have to do the rest oh crystal davis amazon has snatched the rug out of a lot of, from under many many people what's up archangel Christian, I never thought of my job as like being a side hustle. Maybe I need to flip the script and make my job, my hustle, my business, my regular job. That's what it is, man. That's what it is. Because once again, I'm here to tell you, you can have it. You can have everything you want in life. But the problem is that time thing. 
It ain't going to happen in a year. It ain't going to happen in two years. Uh, some exceptional people do it in three. Uh, for me, it took, let's say, five-ish. Well, let's see, no, like six. Because, you know, I'm going from when I had my business I'm going to say it took me six because even though after I left my job and started my own thing, I did very well, I didn't make a lot of profit. I made seven figures, but I made five figures in profit. And I ain't even talking about, we're talking about like 38, 40K off $1.5 million because I messed up so much. It was very depressing. So I made it, but I didn't make what I like to call real money. And real money is the money that you can spend. Because, you know, you have a lot of these people, Amazon FBA people are really guilty of this, and they'll show you these big numbers. But when you break it down to the net, it ain't really that impressive. Um, once again, like take your side hustle. Let's say, let's go ahead and say you have an off the book hustle and you just make 2K a month or maybe 3K a month. That's going to pay most of your bills. Because, see, the thing is, what you want to do, like uh, Christian said with his job, you want to do what you need to do to keep that job and to keep that side hustle. You don't want to crank up all your energy and time into the side hustle. You want to keep it, get it to a certain point, maintain it, grow it slowly, and then focus your real efforts and stuff on your long-term business strategy. Cool, Bruce, true, pretty much the same with everything. Pretty much, man. <laughs> baby hustler from reno nevada i like that steam games was up t dot i'm in school but this feels more like school it is because see one of the things that they don't do in the formal education system is they don't teach you anything about money nothing when i was in school back in the dinosaur days there used to be this thing home ec they would teach you how to balance and checkbook seriously they would teach you that, that just took all that stuff out of the school What's up, King Carlos? You're funny, Charlatan. I noticed that name too. I use my government like, <laughs> like an idiot. Oh no, usually your real name is cool. Shabazz Enterprises. Have business and hustle, which is the stock market and it's outgrowing my business. Wow. Some of you will be in that situation where your hustle will do better than your business. That can't happen. But why would you think about this? you got two sources of income. That's a nice problem to have. Chris, I remember when I first saw you on YouTube, you were talking about making money with storage units. So this channel got started. We, we went back. Because if you'll notice, if you look at the first uh, video, which is um, how to start a business with no money, you'll see that this shirt is way <laughs> loose because I was a big boy back then. George Henry, have you tried PowerPoint for your diagrams? Uh, here's the problem, George. Uh, no, I haven't tried PowerPoint. But when you cause see, you do PowerPoint, I'm going to have to get into Windows. I'm on Mac. I'm going to. I, I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to keep this simple. I'm going to keep this very, very simple. Because when you get complicated, because what I did yesterday worked just fine, and people people really loved it, so we're going to keep doing that. Steam games helped me in school. One plus X, one plus two. <laughs> Good Lord. What's up, Jabrash? Jamar Trasher, you're right. Every American, especially black Americans, need an LLC absolutely america is a corporation so when you're in the corporation you need to be corporate baby <laughs> a lot of people don't understand that it's like i'm gonna keep my job i ain't cut out for being an entrepreneur you cut out to eat you cut out to need gas you cut out to need a place to live you cut out to run a business ving desai and de thanks for the 1500 I don't know what that is, but thanks for it. I'm dedicating my future success to Hustlers Kung Fu. Appreciate it. Oh, that's funny, Josco. That is hilarious. 
Uh, Archer and Jamon is made in India. I know all those shoemakers with economy of skill all make shoes in India. Hey, yeah, all of them do. I think there's very few shoes made in America. I know there's some, but they may literally be 5% of the market. Steven Jameson, get those LLCs out of the corner and get my money. Show me the game. We showing you the game, man. Yeah, Baroque music can actually help you learn. Target Sharks, dude, just dropped 1.5. What are you talking about? Yolanda, appreciate you. Cool Breeze, most people don't realize you're buying the brand, not the clothes of the item, just the name. Absolutely. Most folks don't know that Nike, Adidas are marketing companies. They're not shoe companies. They license all that stuff out to wholesalers and uh, third parties. I think now Nike is starting. I think Nike owns all the Nike stores, and I think that they're reeling it in. You love that. I learned that working for Gap. Branding is very powerful. This is why I changed the name. All right, BR. <laughs> oh, it's rupees. That's what it is. Okay. All right. It just jumped again. Hold on. All right. We're we're getting back there. There's, there's crazy stuff going on, money around the world, man. Infamous NYC. Yes, I'm a full stack developer myself. I build websites, email templates, get money in this, and build data best systems for people. Got to grind out here, bros. Definitely. What's up, Roosevelt Davis? It's been a while since you've been here. Journal right, you were right about the delay graphication. I saw a recent interview with Ricky from New Edition talking about his biggest regret being ignorant about owning his publishing. Curtis Mayfield told me, he said, never sell your work. Rent it out, lease it, but never sell it. And I think a lot of these younger artists are showing these old artists what's up because a lot of them are fiercely independent. Like I think, um, God, Chance the Rapper. I think he's fully 100% independent and he makes millions. Uh, home mech was gone. I mean, I don't understand when they got rid of it. You, I'm 51. How old are you, Shabazz? I'll be 52 next month. Uh, it's an asset that plays long-term versus short-term money of doing shows, getting high and getting laid, just to end up broke, living in the projects and have a mortgage 500K. I mean, a lot of artists just didn't really understand because once again, I put in my group and people couldn't believe it that Ashante has a net worth that is four times greater than Ja Rule. And they were just, they couldn't believe it, right? Because Ja Rule was in all these videos. The money is behind the camera. The money is behind the stage name. Ashanti wrote her own songs. And a lot of people didn't want to believe that because uh, that's one of the things that got her signed because it's like she can write. Because they were like, yeah, she's cute and everything. And then it was like, yeah, but she writes. Really? You know, and I don't know if Beyonce writes her own stuff or not, but I get a vibe. Okay, I'm going to just leave it at that. Lionel Richie writes. Uh, Sire writes. Uh, there, there's just some about people who write that there's a certain vibes that you get. They still got kids dissecting frogs. <laughs> oh, man. What's up, Von B? Kashan, nobody ever talked about five checking accounts in college. Part of this is stuff that I developed from my business. And some of the stuff is just standard accounting for corporations, because what I did is took what huge corporations did. And I brought it down to a small business level because there's so much you can do with those checking accounts.
Oh, health and wealth going way back. I remember not only taking home ec, learning how to sew and cook in school, but also learned how to type and take shorthand. Got my first job as a teen because I could type. They call that keyboard now. When I was transitioning out of the boarding house, I got into this veterans program and they call it keyboard. And I was like, you mean typing? No, keyboarding. Vaughn B pages, PowerPoint for Mac. Once again, all right. Let's let's put it to this and hopefully let's put this to rest. I have a different creative process. The stuff is better when I create on the fly. So doing PowerPoint and all this other stuff, it just didn't have the look that I wanted. I, I'm quite sure I could find find someone to hook it up. But for right now to get the information out versus and this is a really good point. Some of the most powerful information I have gotten has been from somebody on a whiteboard. Now, the, this this is thing when you go to these um, masterminds and these meetings is somebody on a whiteboard or having one of these huge tablets where they're just writing on. tab. That's what you you know, you got people paying three, four, five, 10, 20 G's for that. So let's not get caught up in the weeds of making it look pretty. Let's make sure it's effective. Because uh, there was like three, four people. Thanks. for I love this. I love this. So that tells me I'm going to keep doing it. Um, and I actually use pages to put that presentation together. I just drew the diagrams on my iPad. Plus, for those of you in Hustle undergrad, I got some very good news. Y'all going to love this. Jermon, um, Jabras, Uber will be my side hustle. Then I start trucking business with my brother. He's a truck driver. All right. Uh, Jerome Carter. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> okay. Any books or templates on how to create your own sales funnel? Uh, Jerome, I don't really have a sales funnel. I do what's called direct marketing. I was like, hey, you know, join Hustlers Undergrad for this. That's it. I don't have a sales funnel. A sales funnel is for larger more established people if you're starting out brand new you need to do direct response it's faster you're going to get a faster feedback fat feedback loop of what's worked because you go ahead and put together a complicated funnel you're going to have to spend a lot of money to see what works and i'm talking about 10 20 30k testing money just testing now once you dial all that in and you got the appropriate back end we talking millions a month but once again how many people here have the 20 to 30 to 40 to 50 thousand dollars to test and make absolutely no money back that's one of the reasons that i um suspended my adsense campaign because i used to spend a lot of money in this channel and i just went in a different direction i was like you know what adsense is playing funny games we're just gonna go to a direct response model MMA fan three. If you can pick up women, you can start a business. I love that. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> oh man. Should pass. It's a big problem to only sleep three to four hours a day. Uh oh, I'm from your hometown, Birmingham, Alabama. I was a sheriff deputy many years ago, patrol Adamsville area to Birmingham. Wow, man. You know, you know the attitudes there, man. Rash, yes, there was an undergrad hustler webinar. Uh, one of the problems is is that people, and then once again, I, I should say this every time go to your spam folder and pull out all of my emails and put them into your inbox, and then what you know, put glendon at hundergrad.com in your save contacts. And there's the session is in the art of holding companies. I recorded it. Uh, bloated it and i actually sent out another email last night announcing the webinar that's going to be 7 p.m tonight uh shadow the music artist uh shadow the music dan Lok just said some a bad product and a great salesman is better than a bad salesman and a great product dan is my dude i actually met him um i i I will agree with that. 
I, I definitely would agree with that. Thanks for the $30, Cool Breeze. Appreciate you. What's up, Journal? Uh, Von B. Curtis Mayfield told you or learned that from him because if he told you personally, that's some real game. Man, he told me he was, because you know he was paralyzed. And we were just talking. I was like, I write poetry. And he's like, look, whatever you do with your poetry, never sell your work. Always own your work. And he, and he even said, it's like, you're like, right now, nobody's buying it. Don't worry about that because you, you never know what will happen 10, 20, 30 years from now. And if you sell your work, you're going to regret it. All right. All right. Uh, I am 51. I'll be 52 next month. And something else, too. Shabazz Enterprise. He has his name. He has his face. Because, see, when, like, we're going to jump into a little disruptive male game here. Um, many guys come at me talking about, you know, I'm this, I'm that, I'm that, right? But they don't show their face on YouTube. They don't have their picture. See, if you feel that you're the man, that you got game, you're so arrogant, you will show your face. You cannot show your face. And that's one of the first signs that this person is just playing games. <laughs> Charlotte, and I know, man, it's big money. Uh, Crystal Davis, Barry White was a millionaire many times over because all his publishing rights. I had no idea he was so wealthy. Where is it? Well, this ain't a real pen. Oh, we got a real pen. This pen can make you a millionaire. If you know how to write music, you know how to write books, you know how to create courses, if you know how to write, that can make you so much money, and then that money can turn into passive income. I wish I had written 15 books in 2009 and 10. I really do. You know, hindsight's 2020. Facts, independence where yet you can't be afraid of hard work. It ain't no fairy tale. Nope. George Henry, removal of home economic goes into the feminist movement. I wonder about that because typically it was girls. It was a few guys, but they took it out. Yeah, see, once again, you, you really have to look at just Google all the people who are songwriters. Google Lionel Richie. He's worth almost $300 million. Google Elton John. Elton John wrote his own songs. Um, Kenny Rogers. Um, God, what? Dolly Parton. Uh, I think Lionel Richie wrote one song for them. I think in their in the streams or something like this, because Lionel wrote a lot of country music. <laughs> yes, I mean you know people get up into that other craziness. Uh, uh, Beyonce write but does outsource to others. Steve Jameson, I, I would say. I mean, I just don't get the feeling that she's a writer. I get the feeling that she, now let's say, maybe she writes like Michael Jackson wrote. Because Michael Jackson used to be, he didn't play any instruments, but he'd be like, shum, 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 and they put that into a song. So she could have collaborator, co collaborators, I would believe that. No, Beyonce does not write her song. <laughs> Uh, RJ and Beyonce will tell you that she sings other songs to the left. Neo, wow, life skills are gender based. I did not know. I know Chandelier, I know that girl is uh, she can be a little depressed at times. JCH, uh. -huh. Uh, Pooh Bear. He wrote a lot of stuff for Justin Bieber, and Justin Bieber actually said, "No, Pooh Bear wrote that," and he put Pooh Bear on because uh, you can go to the Pooh Bear Vlad interview, and he'll talk about that because a lot of these artists they will not tell you who wrote their songs. They will have the songwriter contract con contractually obligated not to give up the info. Lucid Dreamer, I don't have the bandwidth for that. Yolanda Trust, bloody great content. Appreciate the $10 super chat.
Uh, Mo Grizzly, why did my bank give me the side eye in third degree for wanting these extra accounts? But it makes sense for what I do, and now it's easy to keep up and separate my funds. Uh, most bankers are not used to people coming in and doing it at a small business level. My banker, when I set up mine, she had worked in corporate and she understood and she was just like, well, congratulations a lot. She said most small business owners don't do this. And also part of it is the people who open up corporate accounts are trained to vet you out. They'll ask you about your business. They're, all those little chatty you know, conversations. So what do you do and how do you make your money? That's part of their interrogation process. Uh, Dylan Brick, Chris Records, Mastermind, and Jane Smiley use whiteboards, and they're not cheap. No, because the thing is, when you get to a certain level, you don't need pretty. You need effective. All that pretty stuff. Because once again, uh, this girl, she was selling this video training. It was super pretty. It was super professional. But it didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work. Well, thank you, Crystal Davis. This channel is food for the financial stomachs. I've grown to love this channel. You have so much knowledge and inspiration to offer. Appreciate that. Yeah, man, because when you look good and you know it, you won't put your face out there. That, that's that inner arrogance. <laughs> you you, you going to do that, man. Uh, Crystal Davis, do you like Kindle Publishing? Let's talk about Kindle Publishing. Kindle publishing is a tool. It does nothing without talent, good books, and a good back catalog. Nothing. So if you look at Kindle as a tool, I know I know a few people. I know one guy. He's doing eighty thousand dollars a month from Kindle publishing. He's written uh, seventy eight books in the last seven years. He was doing a book a month. He was a machine. It got, he actually gained 40 pounds, so he started doing his books on one of these walking treadmills, and he lost 40. He was a machine because that's one of the things. If you want to sell books, write a lot of books. You want to sell a lot of books? Write a lot of books. Uh, Sean, Ellen Joan only composes the music. Bernie writes, all right, once again. Composing the music, making the beats, that's big money. Yeah, because the thing is, so many people, one of the things with hustle porn is people want to make money pretty. It ain't about making the money. They want to make it pretty. They want to make it in a way that they can say, look, hey, I'm a, I'm a baller. Hey, I did this. Um, there's a guy who came to... Um, one convention I went to years ago, he sells flags, you know, flag for a house. He's doing three million a year selling flags. Flags. Height, weight, and real talk. You gave me chills when you said the pencil can make you mean so you know how to write, which I do. Yeah, because one of the things is people don't want to work. Meaning, like when you write your first book, there's this moment of joy and glee, and you feel so good, and you should enjoy that, and then immediately sit down and start writing another book. Infamous NYC. Actually, that's all right. Home Act was removed to increase funding for science and colleges. High schools just followed suit because they were cheap. Consumerism had more of a part of it than feminism. Okay. But like I said, I know it's been removed. I didn't know why. That is funny. All right. So for you folks who are part of Hustler Undergrad, what's going to happen probably next month is I'm getting ready. Well, actually I've gotten a new camera and it worked great when I was near the light. It would probably work better if I lit this up because I don't have any lights on. Let's see. Uh, actually this is one of them. It ain't on, but these stream in 4k. So I'm going to start trying to stream in 4k, but I'm going to, where is it? I don't even think it's on desk. All right. Well, I can show this next month because I'm going to put it together as a formal competition. 
I'm not just going to say, hey, you know, if you're in hustle grad, you're going to get some. You're going to have to work. But um, this is a Zoom recorder. I'm giving this away um, to hustler undergrad students only. Just be real clear about that. Because somebody like, hey, you know, you said you're going to give this away and they bug me. I'm giving this away. Yep. So as I upgrade stuff, I'm going to hold a contest for hustler undergrad students. And this will be for the YouTube stuff. So we're going to do the Zoom recorders. We're going to do the old Logitech cameras. I'm probably going to do some of the lighting because I'm upgrading and making my stuff better. And I'm certain things I'm keeping, but this computer, which is an iMac, i7, 64 gigabyte of RAM. This could be a major contest, but I'm going to give this away. I'm going to give the other one away because what I'm going to do is I'm going to have all of these Pro Max, the gray ones. So I'm going to have probably two or three of those. So these are going to go to the students. And once again, just to let you know what's coming, because, you know, it ain't set up yet. There ain't no timeline. But once I set up, you know, you will know because I want you guys to be successful. Also, did y'all see that video I did on, you know, uh, the la latest video I did on disruptive mail? I shot that with the Sony 3, A7 III, the autofocus. Because you, you notice how some of my videos that it will focus and refocus and my hands to be clear in my face. It doesn't do that. If it, it focuses so fast. So I'm probably going to give away the Sony AR2. I'm keeping the 6500 because that works great for some stuff. So Because I'm going to upgrade. I don't know because Canon is coming out with a 4K camera. And I may get that. And then, but definitely I'm going to give away the Sony R2. So there, there'll be more stuff just for, for students because I'm not going to be doing this to get, no, no, no. That, that's just, I'll get people who just subscribe for the free swag and then they won't really do anything and learn anything. Oh, well, I am going to leave a lot of content because, see, I just use these for work. They ain't really nothing on here, you know, personal. And I have to. There's going to be screen flow that's on here. There's Wirecast on here, Keynote. So, yeah, I'm leaving all that on here. Screen flow, I'm leaving that on here. Von B, I try to tell my friends about intellectual property. You only do the work one time and least in selling the work pays for your the life of work. Um, sir mix a lot. No, um, God, hold on. The guy who let's see. Hold on. Uh, this is bothering me. But he was one of the first rappers. Was it act two? Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Because this is bugging me and I'm going to find it. Okay. DJ Milk did it. DJ Milk. Good Lord. <laughs> See, you got so many people biting folks' names. Top billing. There it is. Top billing, and he actually said that because top billing got sampled by so many people that he has no debt, no mortgages or nothing because of all of the money he got from top billing. It was one of the first rap songs, and Mary J. Blige sampled it. 50 cent, I mean, anytime you, you got to use that work, you got to go to them. He said, Lee, the pics. Uh, I don't have any pictures on these computers. All of my dirty pictures are in um, Google Drive. So I keep nothing on this computer. That's funny. Thanks, Lawrence. 
All right, so that's what's happening. And once again, if you're in Hustlers undergrad tonight after seven, we'll have a Q&A session. All right, so once again, go below, get on the live stream notification list. And if you need help, you want to jump into Hustlers undergrad, it's 300 bucks a month for 30 months. And I guarantee you, the YouTube tax strategy will pay for the whole course. So with that, I'll see you guys later. You have a good one. I am out.